Hey, so do you know how you can help build your baby's physical and mental intelligence? Well, we're gonna talk about that today. If this is your first time here, hi, my name is Brittany Kelly. Welcome to my channel. I'm a family lifestyle expert, a super mom supporter, and a mom of four. So I've been there and I'm all about helping families and supporting you guys as you go through this journey along with me. So in today's video, this is actually gonna be the second of my Teach Your Baby at Home series. So make sure that you subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you get a notification notification as soon as the next video drops. So let's talk about physical intelligence. In this video, we're gonna focus on newborn to about three, four months old, where we can actually do specific daily activities to help increase our baby's physical and mental intelligence. Now, I'm a big believer that babies are brilliant and moldable. I totally thought that I could teach my babies how to read, and I did. I thought that I could teach my babies foreign language and expose them to foreign language, even though I didn't know a foreign language. And now my kids speak Chinese. So it's totally doable. And now I've recently had my fourth baby girl, and you will see her in this video. And I wanna do everything I can to give them a great start. So I'm sharing with you guys all the tips and tricks that I have learned. But don't take my N equals one experience. Let's talk about the Polgar sisters. So if you've never heard of them before, they are actually chess prodigies. But let's start at the beginning. Their father, Lancelot Polgar, was actually an educational psychologist. And he really believed that you could actually build prodigies and geniuses. If you took a normal healthy child and really poured into them, they could actually be brilliant and geniuses in a specific area. A lot of people at the time thought that that was odd, but I'm a huge believer also in nature and nurture. I think that both things really come together to build up brilliant babies, brilliant children, brilliant people. He actually thought that it would be a great idea to try this out with his own children. So he had to find someone to marry him, and he did. He found a woman named Clara, he married her, and they ended up having three girls. And their three girls were actually taught chess. And he thought chess was a good idea because it was pretty objective in measurement. So at the time, it was pretty unconventional to see women playing against men men and women chess was actually separated but these women were or these little girls were trailblazers and they actually ended up being some of the absolute best chess players in the world in fact their youngest daughter Judith Pogart ended up beating Bobby Fischer's record as the youngest grand master ever at the time and she is considered the best female chess player of all time so based off of his theory he proved things to be correct you can help build your babies and your children to be brilliant and I think the most important part of this story is that the girls were described as being happy, delightful, normal kids who just so happened to be exceptional. And for me, happiness is the ultimate goal. So that was a really great point for me to hear about the story. Now that we have newborns and little babies, what can we do to start building a strong foundation for them as they reach milestones? We want to see them go from being rolling over babies to crawling, to sitting, to standing, and finally the big one, walking. Well, I'm gonna give you some tips right now on what you can do to help create those milestones and get that brain moving and working in their favor. We know that the brain grows by use. Similar to our muscles, we have to use it or we'll lose it. And in the first six years of life, the brain is growing more rapidly than it will in any other time of our lives. So we wanna make sure that we are really paying close attention and nurturing our children during this very sensitive, foundational time in their lives. In the book, Fit Baby, Smart Baby, Your Baby, the authors actually talk about physical intelligence and how all children can be nurtured into being brilliant, 
physically superb children. I noticed that for my children, it was far easier for them to learn sight words and how to put together sentences and even decoding words for reading than it was for them to learn how to tie a shoe or how to use their fingers and fine motor skills. So those skills cannot be ignored whatsoever. They're really important. So let's talk about what we can do for our newborns. So one of the things that I found really interesting in this book is that it said that babies, newborns especially, are often put in an upside down position. They're always seen in a supine position where their face is facing the ceiling or facing you instead of being in the prone position where their bellies are on the ground. And they say that it kind of is similar to a turtle being on its back, just on its shell, kind of making these random weird movements that absolutely generate nothing. They're pretty useless. But once you place the baby in prone, you actually see these movements help them get to the next phase, which is crawling and moving with purpose. So one of the things that was very heavily stressed was to keep your baby on their tummies as much as possible throughout the day. Now we now associate that as tummy time, but that's one of the things that helps build those really strong back muscles and abdominal muscles, neck muscles, so that they can hold their head up and start moving closer and closer to other milestones. So I would like to break down our activities that we will go over today into three separate parts. Optimizing tummy time, grasp reflex, and vestibular activities. So tummy time is something that many moms are very familiar with and some new moms are just starting to become familiar with it. As soon as your baby comes home from the hospital, it is totally okay and game for them to be on tummy time. Tummy time can look like a lot of things. You can have them on the floor or on your chest, but it's up to you. One of the things you wanna make sure is happening is that they're in a safe, clean, warm environment where they either have on just a onesie or just a diaper so that they can really feel their surroundings, make sure that their little hands are completely free, their toes are completely out and free, no socks, and they are able to really feel the floor and really feel the, their movements fully. You can optimize your tummy time by actually using high contrast visuals, such as black and white cards, you can use black and white books or toys, and you also can use your face. Your face is one of their favorite things to see, so make sure you're giving them a lot of face time by actually getting on the floor with them, engaging with them, and seeing how they move and how you can help them stay on their tummies as long as they possibly can stand. For me, the thing that helps is to remember that the optimal position for them is to be on their tummy. So instead of putting them in a chair or a stroller as soon as they wake up, remember that the first thing you should do is probably change their diaper and get them right to tummy time. Try to keep their environment very warm, keep your house very warm so they're able to do so in as little clothing as possible. And then once they are tired of tummy time or they need a break, then you can go into something else the grass reflex. Now this is something that the book actually starts talking about in phase two. This also is something that you wanna start incorporating when they're very young. I notice for my children that when I don't start very early, that they actually don't feel like grabbing the little stick when I use the stick at in the beginning and it takes a little bit longer for them to get used to it. So I highly suggest starting it soon, as soon as you can. Start using a little stick, but first I like using my thumbs. I'll take my thumbs and allow my children to grab onto my thumbs with their tiny little hands. When they're newborns, they like to keep their hands really tight. So you have to get in there so they can hold your finger and allow that to pull them up so that they can practice gripping and building that upper body strength. I also like to just take a little stick. The book also mentioned this about three quarters of an inch thick. I personally just snapped off a stick from one of my wooden hangers and just use that for my babies. But you can take the stick and have them grip it and help them practice lifting themselves up with the stick. It's actually really cute. I love doing these activities because it makes 
playing with your newborn so much more fun and interesting because you have a game plan. Remember to be persistent and consistent. Don't think that they have to do this perfectly every time. They are learning, it's totally okay. And it's totally normal for them to not even feel like grabbing it. I know when I recorded this video, my baby girl Dove, who's three months old, did not feel like holding on to the little stick and that's okay. Vestibular activities. So there was actually a study done on kittens in a neuropediatric institute in Moscow and they noticed that the kittens and puppies who were given gentle vestibular activities actually had brain growth uh, greater than those who weren't at about 20 to 30 percent. So this is something that is an interesting result. So again, in this book, Fit Baby, Smart Baby, Your Baby, from birth to age six, they talk about the vestibular activities that you can use to help increase your baby's intelligence, like these puppies and kittens. So one of the things that I thought was really cool to do was trying to help my baby learn rolling over. Even though my daughter is able to roll over independently, we still use activities that are guided where I'm rolling her over gently from back to belly and from belly to back. I like to use a little mat. I have a purple gym mat and I also have a multicolored gym mat. If you're interested in finding out what those look like or where I get them from, I completely have my affiliate Amazon links right in the description box. So go ahead, click those and check it out. But I like to use these mats because I know it's going to be a gentle landing space. We also like to do activities where the baby is moving around on the shoulder like an airplane. They're kind of up on your shoulder, legs straight out, using their abdominal muscles. They're moving up and down. They're moving from left to right with a pillow. A lot of different things to get those vestibular activities in because that has to deal with balance and we are trying to engage them and get them in different scenarios where they have to use their balance and sense. Now if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and make sure that you continue to watch the playlist that I have of all the videos in this teacher baby at home series and have that notification bell on so you don't miss a thing. I would like to expand upon this even more and share so please let me know in this comment section below any questions that you have or anything specific you would like for me to go over and I will be happy to help you. I will see you in the comment section or you can continue watching the rest of the videos.